This is Will Lanziata, New York City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film. And today I am thrilled to be speaking with the acclaimed visual artist, the one and only Gene. Hello, Gene, how are you? I'm good, how are you doing? Gene, I'm doing so much better now that we are finally meeting. My goodness, you are in downtown Santa Ana, correct? That is correct. You have your studio and gallery, but my friend, you freaking do it all. You have your own brand, you do photography, you do visual art, you do comics. I want to know first and foremost, where were you born and when did you real? was there like an aha moment for young Gene? Like, oh my God, I love art. Like, were you surrounded by it growing up? What? Absolutely not, actually. I, I was not surrounded by it growing <laughs> up. Uh, so I'm a, let's see, I'm a second generation uh, Hispanic American. And uh, my great grandfather came to the U.S. with bride in tow and baby in arm in 1906, and it cost them six cents uh, for both of their green cards to be here. Uh, they established themselves in, in the center of Orange County in Santa Ana, uh, and that is actually where I was born and raised. Uh, my grandfather was a very successful businessman, so uh, I got the was fortunate enough to have some go to private schools and whatnot. But I'm the youngest of five children, uh, and I have two older brothers who are complete stud athletes, and I was not a stud athlete. In fact, I was known as the tackling dummy on the uh, football team. And uh, with that, uh, my mom uh, did a great job of keeping, keeping me occupied, and I always saw her and my grandfather making things. They would be painting, repainting stuff or refurbishing stuff, so uh, they were very crafty themselves. So, uh, but my mom, you know, during those times of, you know, uh, brothers out doing sports and stuff like that, in order to keep me occupied, would just put crayons in front of me uh, and, think, and always had something around. So I really became interested in that, uh, just like drawing and, and, and kind of doodling. And then um, it was really interesting because in second grade, I drew something, I drew a dinosaur actually in just one stroke. And it was, I thought it was brilliant at that time. You know, you're second grader, you can conquer the world. But, uh, I was immediately told by one of the nuns at my school, I shouldn't be doing that and I should never draw, period. And it crushed me. And I was like, you know, haunted by that. But at the same time, I just kept, kept drawing, kept drawing. Fourth grade was my aha moment. Uh, and, and it was interesting because uh, the class, the teacher had gotten a bunch of like 50, there's 30 kids in the class. The teacher got 12 drawing pads from somebody. And they said, give them out to the most artistic kids. And when number 12 went out, I did not get one. <laughs> and that was like, oh, it was crushing, you know. And then all of a sudden, I felt this tap on the shoulder. And like this girl who sat behind me, her name was Nanette Taylor, ran up to the front and she said, Mr. Haas, which was my teacher at the time, she said, Dean didn't get one and he's a good artist and you need to find one for him. So I remember him going, tapping his head and opening his drawer. He had an extra one in his drawer. And she came and she gave it to me. She was here. And that was the very first time somebody else, one of my peers, saw me as an artist. And from that moment on, I considered myself, you know, creative and an art. And I've, not, I've, I've recently reached out to her many years later, Nanette Taylor, from fourth grade, um, and said, thank you for my career. Oh, thank gosh. you for my life as an artist, you know, because it, if it wasn't for that, I don't know really where I've been. Somebody believed in me, one of my peers, that young. So that, that was a big, big moment. Gina, are you trying to make me cry? Come on now. Listen, <laughs> I think that's so beautiful because I'm so fortunate. I've been able to interview almost 900 artists in, within eight months all over the world. And with so many artists, um, no matter what the discipline is, it took that one person and usually up here to yeah. activate, to see, to hear, to per give permission. It was just that key that was needed to unlock and I love the fact that you were able to reach out to say thank you, but I also just love Gene that even from a young age, it seems like, for, especially from that moment, there was an unapologetic nature about you that seems to now parlay into everything you do, whether it's your brand, your NFTs, your photography, your comic. I want to go into one at a time with the time that we have. In terms of your photography, talk to me a little bit about your process, and specifically for the audience that is just meeting you, the type of photography that you do. 
So um, thank you. Now I, I appreciate. It. I think photography is probably like my most outlying medium. Um, I, I and it's probably the one that probably brings me the most peace because I don't feel any. It, it's just kind of out there, and I never really kind of get anything back from it. Um, and uh, my photography is normally done with somebody else. It's created. You know, I, I I'm always creating. Um, my primary subject is the fine art nude female. And uh, and in that uh, shooting people that usually aren't models aren't you know it's usually their first time or or, or they're you know they they haven't really, they thought about it and they haven't really found the right person to work with and so I consider it a pretty big honor to you know work with somebody who not only trusts me but then allows themselves to express and the the real reason why I want love working with you know first time models and whatnot is. You know, as a society, we don't see our see, we don't naturally teach ourselves to see ourselves as beautiful. And, uh, and it's a shame and it's heartbreaking. And when somebody is allowed to see themselves, you know, and through my photography or through, you know, their own experience as beautiful, that's a different moment of life. That's, you know, life, there's a point before that and a point after that. And you can actually acknowledge yourself as a beautiful human being, a beautiful creature in the world, and um, and that's my primary, you know, uh, you know, motivation for really creating, you know, the the fine art new photography that I do. Yeah, I do a lot of, you know, I love looking at clouds and and trees and and black and white. Black and white is always my favorite because there's uh, very little left to, you know, it's like there's left little left of imagination. And then you can fill in the color yourself. You can always do that. And I love when people kind of engage in that. But, you know, I love black and white and, and the grain and, and the, you know, the story that it tells just from a, a, a soulful place. It doesn't put a bunch of different minutia into it. It's amazing, so, Gene. Yeah. So, I'm, you know, I really love photography. Uh, I wish I do it. I wish I did it more. Um, and, uh, you know, who I get to do it with is really the, the honor part for me. Well, I love that. And I also love that you're providing a safe space for someone to look at themselves in a figurative mirror, that they're enough. But again, I go back to that fourth grade. It seems like everything seems to subconsciously or consciously or unconsciously stem from that person who said, I see you, I hear you, you're enough. And the fact that that's a North Star for you in all of the disciplines within the arts that you do, I think it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, no, I... I you know, he's saying that reminds me, it's like there's always that, that personal uh, interaction with another creative, per, you know, another creative soul. I think, you know, we're all born creative. That's and right. Then, you know, I think we're also, you know, the majority, at least in the systematic North America, are taught not to be creative. Oh, know? right. Oh, yeah, no, you're crazy. Or, ooh, it's, you know, it's not stable. Or, right. ooh, you know, what, <laughs> you want to be an artist? Like, wow. Yeah, okay, well, tell me what plan B is. You know, yeah, exactly. And, and it's a shame and it's heartbreaking. I taught for 10 years at the University of Redlands, you know, uh, and I taught a course called Being an Artist and it had nothing to do with about, you know, what type of paints or the technical side, but it was actually about waking up every single day and creating, being the creative creature that you are, that you were meant to be, that you were born to be. You know, we are all born, then we get to kindergarten, then they put that square block of crayon in your hand and you do one of two things. You either eat it, or you start drawing with it <laughs> and you had no idea they didn't explain to you how to use it but that's right you're a natural creature that's what we naturally do we create we're creators i love it listen um i want you to talk a little bit about your comics how it came all about that you did that and then also if you can parlay it into the machine brand oh awesome well thank you i appreciate that so the um the comic books really came about uh from that that being a kid and, and the Sunday funnies, you know, that's where comics really came up for me from Calvin and Hobbes and, you know, Berkeley Breath is, is one of my all time heroes and with Bloom County and Opus and, and all that. And, and Charles Schultz, I got to actually meet him uh, one time when I was real young. Um, there is a endless amount of imagination that I draw from just comics and comic books. But my comic book journey started with the Sunday funnies, you know, because it was actually something me and my brothers actually would just roll on the ground and laugh about and, and spend it, you know, spend hours with them when they got there on, on Sunday. And then, you know, allowing ourselves to read the, the dailies and stuff. 
And from that, you know, drawing into comic books and the heroes and the stories and, and allowing myself just to get lost in the art of it in the, you know, the, the cool figures and everything that people were drawing. And so by the time I got to college, I really wanted to do something in art. And that was always kind of pecking at me from the back of my mind. I, I had a, co a comic strip in high school. I had a comic strip in college. And I was really set to be a comic strip artist. And that kind of didn't pan out because right after I graduated, I, you know, I, I kind of discovered this thing called Photoshop, which is, you know, I, was, I actually got to test Photoshop B at the time. And I was like, I bet this could color comics. <laughs> and so uh, I worked with it and contacted other professionals in the industry. And we actually brought, you know, digital coloring, comic book coloring into the industry back in 1992. Well, it was actually 89 when the first one was done, but it wasn't until about 92, 93. When it actually oh my goodness. Done. Wow. Yeah. So, um, so I was one of the pioneers and it was really great to be in, on that forefront. And I, we had a little studio and we actually just became a really cool digital color, you know, comic book coloring company before I went off into fashion and all that stuff. And then, you know, when I got into fashion, I just found a whole new medium of, of what fun and lifestyle and, and street art could be, which is actually how the, you know, my comic book art, the driven art became fashionable. Was that well, yeah. Or and I want you to parlay it into your brand and how that all came about as well. Was it just a natural segue? Yeah, you know, it was, um, it, so we're talking about 90, you know, 96 here when I actually got into fashion and then for the next five year or four years was just really heavy in the, you know, the street fashion and whatnot at the time. I was a creative director of a very large fashion company. And, uh, and then I got, you know, picked up and, you know, drawn into the dot-com world. Uh, but fashion was always cool because it was exciting. It was things I knew. It was music. It was, you know, uh, street uh, action sports and skateboarding. And, you know, growing up in Southern California, this is the heart and hub of it all. You know, we're making up stuff. Let's go downhill fast, face first on a skateboard. Let's, that'll be fun, you know, or let's go surfing, you know. <laughs> uh, so there's a bunch of cool things that I had growing up that had me already exposed into the core lifestyle that these fashion brands are now based on. Absolutely. And so going through my career as a designer and it was always kind of like, well, we need a website, but can you also fashion design and can you also do this and, you know, or we need a, an online presence, but, you know, are you familiar with the, the fashion of the streetwear of, of the streets and, and at the time? And so it's always been there. So, you know, going back to the last, you know, I guess five years now it just hit me it's like i should have my own you know i I've, I've i've developed my own uh studio and my own style and looking at a lot of the you know illustrations or i think all illustrations now but a lot of them were paintings that i've done as, fi as a fine artist they were easily translatable into um illustrations and stuff that could be you know worn on a shirt or, or very cool made into a label so that's where the machine uh unlimited brand has come from and it kind of encompasses the machine comic book and the machine fashion street fashion brand uh the machine we have an rc group uh that does professional rc uh racing as well and um so it's been very very cool um well you are a true artist cute. my friend you're a true yeah. artist with a capital a and on top of it all you know, I want to let everyone know for more on the incredible Gene, you can read more about him right below this video. I mean, you're obviously coming on board this new social media app that is already connecting thousands upon thousands of artists of all disciplines all around the world. But also another thing that you're involved with that's very much a part of this app, tapping into the cryptocurrency world. Talk a little bit about the NFTs that you have. Yeah, so um, I'm falling backwards. I think like a lot of most traditional artists are. You know, I'm not uh, not on the on the uh, front side of fifty here. <laughs> so uh, seeing all this come about is actually pretty cool. You know, it's it's one of those things. It's like, well, I wish you know when I sold something or created something unique, I could actually have a string to it because. You know, once it goes out my door, I don't know if I'll ever see it again. Likewise, I don't. You know, somebody else is going to keep making something and profiting and whatnot off it. And you know, I don't make a, a lot of art to profit off of, but I do like to be rewarded for or or be acknowledged for you know what we have. And you know, the non fungible token uh, medium is a great medium that actually acknowledges and recognizes that there was an artist behind this. That's there right. There's somebody who created it, and there's somebody. 
uh, that whose you know heart and soul is was put into this. So the NFT medium has become really, really cool and very interesting to me. I'm doing a lot of simple line art right now. And actually, uh, about a year ago, my wife uh, gave me an, an Oculus system um, where I am actually was able to take some of this line art and turn it and you can actually turn around and see the backside of that line art, you know, and it's like, okay, now things just got really, really interesting. And it's exciting to see some of the really cool, you know, stuff that people are kind of coming up with here uh, in the you know, NFT world and NFT medium. Absolutely. Well, listen, Gene, I'm so excited you're joining uh, this incredible new app. I'm so grateful for your time, but I'm also so grateful that we're now connected, Gene. And thank you so very much for your time today. Thank you. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate everything you're doing. I love talking with fellow creatives and, and this has been nothing but a joy. And I thank you for the, the opportunity and the avenue you guys are opening up. Oh my gosh. Well, God bless and thank you. Thank you.